Hello guys, welcome to the 16th class of this course. In the last class, we did some simple problems on Lagrange's equation of motion. In this class also, we will solve some problems based on Lagrange's equations and variational principle. So let's define the first problem of today. This will be problem three because in the last class we did two problems this problem statement is use lagrange's equations to describe the motion of a projectile launched with speed V0 at angle alpha with horizontal. So this is a simple projectile problem. So we already did this kind of problem in 10 plus 2 level. So there we did it using the Newtonian mechanics. Here we will do it using the Lagrangian equations of motion. So let's draw the problem first. X axis is our horizontal axis y axis is the vertical axis and, uh, let's say this is the path of the projectile so and so the initial velocity directed like this this is vi and it makes an angle alpha with horizontal So mode of vi is given zero b zero. So let's assume that the starting point is the origin. So zero zero. So in that case, define the initial condition first. Let's define the initial conditions. The initial conditions which is x at time t is equal to 0 0 equals to y at time t is equal to 0 and uh, so the initial velocity is vi so in that case it's the x axis is the y axis And if this angle is alpha, then the x component of initial velocity, it will be v0 cos alpha. And the y component of initial velocity, it will be v0 sin alpha. So then the initial condition is v at time t is equal to 0, sorry not v is x dot x dot means x component of in velocity so at t is equal to zero that means x component of initial velocity which will be v zero cos alpha and y dot at time t is equal to zero it will be v zero sin alpha So these are our initial conditions. Now let's find out the kinetic energy, potential energy, and then the Lagrangian. The kinetic energy in the Cartesian coordinate system, it will be half m x dot square plus y dot square. 
So kinetic energy is half m v square, and v square means v x square plus v y square, and v x means x dot, and v y means y dot. And the potential energy it will be m g y. Here y is the height from this horizontal plane, from this horizontal axis. It's y. Okay. So in that case, the Lagrangian it can be written as t minus v, which will be half m x dot square plus y dot square minus m g y. So now there are two variables here. One is uh, two coordinates. One is x and another is y. So we will get two Lagrangian equations. So the first one is del l del x dot d d t of it, which will be uh, minus of minus of del l del x equals to zero. It implies m x double dot so del l del x dot means m x dot and d d t of that that means m x double dot in the lagrangian there is no x dependence so there is no explicit x, x dependence so in that case del l del x will be zero that means m x double dot will be zero it implies x double dot will be zero that be, it, it is because m is not uh, m is a constant M cannot be zero. In that case, x dot is a constant. At x dot, at any time t, it is a constant. But from initial condition, we already know that x dot at time t is equal to zero. It is v zero cos alpha. And here we derive that x dot is not changing with respect to time. So in that case. X dot t will be same as x dot at t is equal to zero, which will be v zero cos alpha. So it is from from initial condition. So in that case. We are getting x t equal to v zero cos alpha. Let's call it equation one. Now, if we solve, if we solve it, so we will get d x equals to v zero cos alpha d t. Now, if we integrate it from zero to t, let's say it is from zero to x t, because at time t is equal to zero, the particle was at the Origin we already assumed that so in that case x at time t is equal to zero x will be zero so it implies x t will be v zero t was that so the equation two so it is the x x component or x coordinate of the projectile at time t now let's Different now. Now let's uh, find out the another the other Lagrange's equation, which will be d d t of del l del y dot minus del l del y equals to zero It implies m y double dot m y double dot. And uh, del l del y, which will be minus mg, and there is already a minus sign here, so it will be plus mg equals to zero. It implies y double dot equals to minus g. It implies d d t of y dot equals to minus g. It implies d of y dot will be minus g. dt from t is equal to zero. If we integrate it from t is equal to zero to t, then at t is equal to zero, the velocity was y dot at t is equal to zero. So what was y dot at t is equal to zero from initial condition? 
it is v0 sin alpha so instead of this we can write v0 sin alpha it is a lower limit and upper limit let's assume it is y dot t at time t then we will get y dot t it will be v0 sin alpha minus gt okay let's call it equation 3 equation 3 now y dot means dy dt so in that case we can write dy equals to v0 sin alpha minus gt times dt now if we integrate it from time t is equal to 0 to t here for y the lower limit will be 0 because at time t is equal to 0 the particle was at the origin we already assumed and the upper limit let's say yt that implies yt equals to v0 t sin alpha minus half g t square let's call it equation 4 okay so equation 2 and equation 4 These are the x and y coordinates of the projectile at any time t. So these equation two and equation four, these are the solutions basically. Now we can go a little bit further. We can calculate the time of flight. We can calculate the horizontal range. We can also calculate the maximum height. Okay. So this is the horizontal range. defined by capital R and the maximum height, let's use the maximum height defined by capital H. So now first, first calculate the time of flight. Time of flight defined by capital T. total time requires to travel from this initial point to this final point. So look at the picture at the final point, what is the y coordinate? 0, right? It is again on the x axis. So in that case, at y t is equal to t, its value is 0. Then from equation 4, we can write yt equals to 0 equals to v0 t sin alpha capital T minus half g capital T square. It gives uh, half g capital T square equals to v0 capital T sin alpha, which means t is equal to 2 v0 by g sin alpha. So it is the time of flight. Now let's calculate the horizontal range. Given by capital R range. So we already know that time of flight. So in that case, R will be the x coordinate at time t is equal to t. Right. That means so from equation 2, from this equation 2, it will be v0 capital T cos alpha. So v0 capital T cos alpha. And this capital T we already know the value of this capital T, the time of flight it will be 2 v0 square sin alpha cos alpha by g. 
and two sine alpha cos alpha that means sine two alpha. So solution of R will be e zero square by g times sine two alpha. So it's the horizontal range, and lastly, find out the let's find out the maximum height. It's maximum height h. So look at the picture. At maximum height, the y component of velocity will be zero, right? So that means. Y dot. Let's say the particle reaches the maximum height at time t h. So in that case, y dot at t h will be zero, right? So now from equation three, y dot at t h it will be. From equation three, if we write y dot at t h, it will be v zero sine alpha minus g t h. So it will be v zero sine alpha minus g t h implies t h is equal to v zero sine alpha by g. Then at time t h, the y coordinate it will be basically the maximum height. And from equation four, we can write. That y at t h will be v zero t h sine alpha minus half g t h square. So it will be v zero t h sine alpha minus half g t h square. Now, if we calculate it, if we if we put, uh, put the value of t h here, we will get it as half v zero square by g. Sine alpha. It is the expression of maximum height. Okay, so we calculated all these things using Newtonian mechanics in ten plus two level. So here we calculated it using the Lagrange's equation of motion. Now let's move on to our next problem. Which is problem four. The problem statement is: check whether the force F is equal to y z i hat plus z x j hat plus x y k hat. Is conservative or not? Okay. This is the problem statement. Solution. The definition of conservative force we already defined it. In the previous class, which is so, if a force F it is conservative, then we defined it like we will always find a scalar function v such that the divergence of v with a minus sign it will be the force. So if the force is conservative, if the force is conservative, we will always find such v. So the scalar function, and this scalar function is called the potential. This V is the scalar potential. So now, from vector analysis, we know that curl of divergence of some function, some scalar, it will be zero. Now this delta operator is given by i hat delta x plus 
j hat del del y plus k hat del del z so in that case curl of divergence of v it will be curl of i hat del v del x plus j hat del v del y plus k hat del v del z which will be determinant of i hat j hat k hat del del x del del y del del z del v del x del v del y del v del z now it will be i hat multiplied by del to v del y del z minus del to v del z del y plus j hat del to v del z del x minus del to v del x del z plus k hat del to v del x del y minus del to v del y del x now these are partial derivatives and they can interchange they can commute which means this del to v del y del z it is same as del to v del z del y similarly these cases so that means all these terms these are zero which means the determinant is zero and which means that curl of divergence of any scalar function will be zero we can be any function there is no Uh, we have not taken any specific form of v so in that case we can write like minus of uh minus of uh it's a curl of minus of divergence of v will also be zero and this this term this is the conservative force if conservative equals to zero so we proved that if a force is a conservative force then its curl must be zero it's a very important property of a conservative force and it's a very important property through which we can identify whether a force is conservative or not we just need to calculate the curl of it and if we get zero Then we can call, we can uh, tell that the force is conservative. So that's what we will do for this problem, right? We will calculate the curl. So let's calculate the curl of the given force. Curl of F, which is I hat, J hat, K hat, del del x, del del y. Del del z, and this given f is so x component of f is y z, y component of f is z x, and z component of f is x y. So let's write this. Y z, x z, and x y. So now it will be i hat. Now this del del y of x y, which will be x minus this del del z of x z, it will be x two. I mean x plus z hat. So this del del z of y z, it will be y. And here this del del x of x y, it will also be y. Similarly for k hat, it will be z minus z. Which means the curl of F, the curl of our given force, it is zero. It implies the force is the given 
force is conservative. Okay. So it's a very easy process. It's a very easy method to check whether a force is con force is conservative or not. We just need to calculate its curl, and we can conclude from there whether it is conservative. This problem five. The problem statement is. Using variational principle, find out the shortest distance between. two points on the surface of a sphere of radius r so we already did uh, a problem similar like this where we found out the smallest distance between two points in a 2d cartesian plane and which was straight line here we will calculate the distance the shortest distance or the shortest path between two points on the surface of a sphere okay so it's a very important problem let's draw the sphere first This is the origin, and let's say this is the y axis. This is the x axis, and this is the z axis. So, if in the spherical spherical coordinate, if a point is defined by this r vector, then the angle with z axis, this angle is called. Theta, and the projection on this xy plane, it makes an angle phi, and this distance, which is called rho, magnitude of distance. So in that case, any infinitesimal change in the position vector, it can be written as dr. Is equal to zero rho hat. Uh, okay, let's write rho hat, rho hat in the beginning. So rho hat zero plus theta hat rho d theta plus phi hat rho sine theta d phi. now in our problem we are always constrained in the surface of the sphere that means for our problem rho is r and d rho is 0 it means for our problem dr is r Theta dot d theta plus phi dot sine theta d phi uh, d phi. So in that case, any so if let's say it's a sphere. and there are two points let's say this is point 1 and this is point 
0.1 so there can be many curves joining this point 1 and point 2 and we want to find the shortest distance so we want to find the curve that will give the shortest distance so any infinitesimal distance on a path on the uh, surface of the sphere which is given by ds is root under dr dot dr which will be equal to root under uh, r square d theta square plus sin square theta d phi square if we take this r and d theta square outside we will get r times root under 1 plus d phi d theta square sin square theta d theta it can be written as r root under 1 plus phi dot square sin square theta 1 plus phi dot square sin square theta d theta so here phi dot phi dot means d phi d theta okay it is not a time derivative here the independent variable is theta so in that case the total distance traveled while going from point 1 to point 2 will be integration from point 1 to point 2 ds which will be integration from point 1 to point 2 are root under 1 plus phi dot square sin square theta d theta now this is the total distance and we need to maxim uh, minimize it and this means we can consider it, it as action And we, we need to minimize this action. So in that case, our Lagrangian will be this term. This term will be our Lagrangian, which is a function of pi, pi dot theta. So our Lagrangian will be r root under 1 plus pi dot square sine square theta. So now we need to minimize this action. So where this action is minimized from the Hamilton's principle, we can say the Lagrangian will follow the Lagrange's equation of motion. In that case, the Lagrange's equation of motion will be dd phi dot of dd theta. Theta is the independent variable here. So theta is analogous to the time. Del, del, del phi equals to zero. Now look at this Lagrangian. There is no phi explicit phi dependence here. So in that case, this del and del phi will be zero. We are left with dt theta of r and del and del phi dot, which will be half two phi dot sin square theta by root under 1 plus phi dot square sin square theta equals to 0. So this half and half will cancel and this r is a constant. So this r is a constant. In that case, we can take this r outside the integral and we can take also take this r in, in the right side also and 0 by r so it will be 0 again so then we will get dd theta of phi dot sin square theta by root under 1 plus phi dot square sin square theta equals to 0 because r not is equals to 0 it 
it means phi dot sin square theta by root under one plus phi dot square sin square theta is constant. Let's call it C. Okay. So we had up to equation four. So it will let's call this equation as equation five. Let's call it. Five. So now we can solve this equation by finding this expression of phi dot first, and then we can solve it. We can do the integration, but it will be a very difficult job. So we will take another path here. So we will first state the equation, first state the solution. And we will show that the solution, the solution that will satisfy this equation. Okay, the solution is solution is cot theta equals to minus root under one minus c square by c sine of phi minus phi dot. Let's call it equation six. And now we will show that this equation six will satisfy equation five. Let's take the derivative with respect to theta of equation six. So it will be cot theta. The derivative of cot theta equals to minus root under one minus c square by c d d theta of Sine of phi minus phi dot phi zero. Now derivative of cot theta is minus cosec square theta is equal to minus one minus c square by c, and d d theta of this it will be phi dot times cos of phi minus phi naught or phi zero. In that case, or phi dot will be c by root under one minus c square cosec square theta by cos of phi minus phi zero. This is the expression of phi dot. Let's call it equation seven. Now we will calculate. We will put this expression of phi dot in equation five in the left hand side of equation five, and we will show that the left hand side will be c. So L H S of equation five. It is phi dot. By sine square theta by root under one plus phi dot phi dot square sine square theta will be equal to c by root under one minus c square sine square theta cosec square theta by Cos cos of sorry cos of phi minus phi dot by root under one plus c square by one minus c square cosec to the power four theta sine square theta by Cos square phi minus phi dot. Equals to c by root under one minus c square 
this sine square theta times cos cosec square theta will be one because cosec theta is one by sine theta. In that case, we will here we have one by cos of phi minus phi dot. Now in the denominator, if we add this one with this term, so here also we will get a one uh, cos of a phi minus phi dot, and this cos of phi minus phi dot will cancel with this cos phi minus phi dot. So in that case, we will get one by root under. Cos square phi minus phi dot plus c square by one minus c square. Again, cos to the power uh, four theta times sine square theta. It will be cos square theta. It equals to c root under one minus c square times one by Under. This cos square phi minus phi dot can be written as one minus sine square phi minus phi dot plus c square by one minus c square cos square theta equals to c by root under one minus c square one by root under Now this sine square phi minus phi dot. So from this equation six, we can write sine square phi minus phi dot is c c square by one minus c square times cot square theta. It will be one minus c square by one minus c square times cot square theta. So you can easily check from equation uh, six. Okay, take this. Uh, root under one minus c square by c with this side, this uh, left hand side, and square it. So you will get sine square phi minus phi dot, which is equal to c square by one minus c square times cot square theta. And there is plus c square one minus c square cosec square theta. Now cosec square theta minus cot square theta equals to one. So in that case, we will get one by root under one minus c square one plus one minus c square by one minus c square. Because if we take this c square by one minus c square common from these two terms, we will get cosec square. So this is cosec cosec square theta minus cot square theta, and which will be one. And now, if we if we add these two terms, it will be c by root under one minus c square times root under one minus c square plus c square by one minus c square, and this is basically uh, c by root under one minus c square times one by one by root under one minus c square. Equals to c, so which means this is the RHS of equation equation five RHS of equation five. Okay, so that means equation six is the solution. So equation six is the equation of the required curve, where the distance travelled will be minimum. So equation of the required curve is then equation six, which is cot theta. Which is cot theta equals to minus cot theta equals to minus root under one minus c square by c sine of phi minus phi dot.
So now let's call this term, this root under root under one minus c square by c, as a. In that case, we will get minus a sine of phi minus phi dot. So now if we write this cot theta as cos theta by sine theta and multiply sine theta in the right hand side, then we will get cos theta equals to a sine phi naught sine theta cos phi minus a cos phi naught sine theta sine phi. Let's call it equation nine. So now we know that j is equal to rho cos theta x equal to rho sin theta cos phi and y equals to rho sin theta sin phi. With these uh, relations, we can replace this in the equation nine. So we can multiply equation nine by rho both side and we can write it like so if we multiply rho in this side in the left hand side it will be rho cos theta which will be z so then equation 9 will be z equals to so here if we multiply rho then this rho sin theta cos phi will be x so it will be a sin phi naught times x minus a cos phi naught times so then rho times sin theta sin phi it will be y y now it is the equation of a plane passing in so equation of a plane of a of a plane cartesian plane or in cartesian coordinate equation of a plane in cartesian coordinate in cartesian coordinate that passes through the origin so in that case the intersection of this plane and the sphere will be a circle of radius r with its origin at the with its center at the origin with its center at the origin so this is called the this circle is called this circle is called the grid circle of the sphere okay so the smallest distance between two points on a, a surface of a sphere it will follow the grid circle okay and this distance is called so distance between or the or the curve 
between two points which follows the grid circle so the curve between two points of a sphere on a sphere which follows the grid circle is called the geodesic okay so to find the smallest distance uh, between two points on a sphere it will be a equation of a geodesic but it will follow the equation of grid circle the path of grid circle joining these two points points one, one and two okay so it's a very important uh, problem in the next class we will do some more problems on this variational principle and the lagrange's equation of motion we will give some home homeworks also so that's all for today thank you